Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Mix. So one of my subscribers, we'll just call him Daryl because that's his name, reached out and asked if I could help with the design of a replacement ground spike for a solar light. You can see the broken piece here. Well, I gladly accepted the challenge. So in today's video, I'll show you my design approach. Now, if you'd like to take on this challenge, go ahead and pause the video and give it a shot and then come back in, we'll compare approaches. I'm going to go simply by the picture here and we'll just be guessing at dimensions since I have nothing to go by, but I have seen one of these before. All right, let's dive in. All right, we'll begin by creating a sketch on the front plane here. So our blue, red or ZX plane, I'm going to start with a line right from the origin straight up. And I'm going to give that line a dimension of 140 millimeters here. And now I'm going to sort of just begin sketching the rough outline of that profile. Um, not worrying about getting the exact dimensions, but I know it comes out a bit and then it goes up a bit and then in and then out and then back in. So, you know, this is a rough profile and I can maybe clean this up a bit before I enter dimensions. But I'll go ahead and start entering dimensions now. Um, the bottom edge here, uh, I'm going to go with a 12 millimeter radius. And then this first segment here, I'm going to go with 60 millimeters. And then this point here where it starts to jut in, I'm going to go with 100 millimeters from the base. And this other sharp point on the outside there, we'll go with 120. And let's see the distance here where this inside point is. I'm going to go with seven millimeters and this right here, the outer point there, I'm going to also dimension that one at, I'm going to do that one at 12. Okay. So just some rough dimensions. Now I'm not basing these off anything. I'm just basing this on what kind of looks um, reasonably accurate from just the picture I have. So. Uh, I'm going to go with that and I'm going to take this center line here and I'm going to make that a center line. So this line, make it a center line um, right from our sketch palette. By the way, if you want to know what all these funny little symbols are up here, make sure to check out my Fusion 360 Sketch Constraints Cheat Sheet. It's a free downloadable PDF that describes each of these symbols and what they do and how to use them. And then I'm going to click finish sketch, go to create down to revolve, select my pro. Actually, I don't even have to select anything. That's so beautiful with that center line tool is it's pretty smart. Once you have your center line, it, it'll pick where the profile is and it'll automatically do a full revolve. So you'll have this shape here, which kind of uh, looks like an intercontinental ballistic missile here, but we won't be using it for that purpose. And next we're going to use our thin extrude tool. So um, I'll show you the approach we're going to take. We're going to create a sketch on the X Y plane and let's go ahead and project just the circle um, into that sketch of the uh, base uh, of our missile here. So we'll go P for project, select that uh, outer perimeter there. And in this case, I'm using a, specified entities that I have selected. Click OK and then we'll untoggle the bodies there so we see just that sketch. And I only need to see the second sketch here. I don't need to see that first sketch so we'll untoggle that as well. The approach I'm going to take here is I want to extrude um, these sort of side fins here. And we're going to do that with thin extrude. So we're not going to make full profiles. We're just going to create some lines. And this is a super efficient method to do this rather than um, relying on creating sketch profiles. So I'm just going to create a line out here. I'll grab my midpoint constraint here, click the line and click on the center icon or the center origin there. It's going to throw the line right on there um, and put it right on the center. And I'm going to click my coincident constraint, click on the end point and in the circle and it'll bring it right to the edges. So you see here how using these constraints makes that uh, just so much more efficient than trying to draw it in place. And I do have a free constraints cheat sheet, which I'll leave the link below for you to grab, um, which lists each and every one of these constraints here in a small description in the image of what they do. So you can kind of have it as a quick reference. Um, again, you can get that by clicking on the link below. All right, to do the vertical line, I'm going to use the same approach. I'm just going to draw a line, make it sort of extra long midpoint constraint, click on that line, click on the origin grab my coincident constraint and coincident this endpoint to the perimeter of my circle. Okay, next we'll go ahead and create. So that will take care of this, the center 
um, fins there and then we're going to go with this guy and this guy here so to do that what we'll do is I'm going to go back to the design again I'm just going to draw two lines across here you see I've got a perpendicular constraint there and I'll go ahead and draw one more alright now uh, a couple things I'm going to do here to get these lined up. Now I want them to go past, they don't need to go right up to the edge here. So I'm not going to worry about uh, putting a coincidence constraint between the endpoint and the circle. Um, but what I can do is I will, for example, use a uh, vertical constraint here. And if I hold the shift button and I hover over the line near the middle, it'll give me that midpoint there. Click on that and click on the origin and that'll center that line right on the origin. I'll do the same thing with this second line here. Find that midpoint. Go ahead and uh, make it so that they're both centered on that vertical line. Uh, I can go ahead and make them both equal. So I'll grab my equal constraint, say this line is equal to this line. Next, I also want these to be symmetric. Like I could have drawn one and mirrored it, but you can also, after the fact, use your symmetry, symmetry constraint. So the way this symmetry constraint works is you click on it and you say, I want uh, the first selection and the second selection to be symmetric about the third selection. And you can see here now, I can move them and they're both um, symmetric to this line here. So now I can enter a dimension here and I'll make that six millimeters for this line. And lastly, I'll add a dimension to this segment here. Let's say 30 millimeters and I'll click on finish sketch. So let's bring the sketch back into view here and we'll hit E for extrude. And I'm gonna select uh, Thin extrude here because we're just going to extrude the line. I'll select the vertical line and this horizontal line. So we got this cross there. Uh, bring my bodies back into view. And in here, I'm going to do, let's go see from the bottom up here. So uh, wall thickness will go with center. I'm sorry, wall location, we're going with center. Wall thickness will go with two. Distance, we're going to go all. Actually, let's bring, start dragging that up first and then distance all. We'll see, we have this, it wants to cut, but we don't wanna cut. What we wanna do is uh, apply an intersect. So we're gonna change the operation from cut to intersect here and click okay. And you can see that that leaves us, which is the intersection of uh, where both bodies would meet, which gives us that cylindrical shape of that first body we created plus our thin extrude lines. So now we have this, which kind of, you know, pretty much gets us there. Let's continue with the other lines here. Let me bring them back into view. And here I'll hit E for extrude. Again, select thin extrude, select both lines here. And I'm gonna start dragging this up. I'm gonna make this, actually, let's go ahead and do the same thing we did on the other one. Um, center, wall thickness is gonna be two and for distance we're going to go to object and I want this to go to about right here where this starts to curve in and I can reference that point and we're going to change the operation from cut to new body click OK all right now we've got these fins there and I'm going to apply a chamfer here to these edges so we'll do modify down to chamfer I'll select one two three and four of those edges and I'll just start bringing them in until they sort of meet the middle here and we'll go ahead and say 14 no, 15 oops we'll do 15 millimeter chamfer and a little more I want that to fully be inside there so 16 looks like it'll get us there all right 16 and there we have it. Okay, so now we have the two, actually three separate bodies here. Right, we have our middle body we created in each of these uh, outer fins are their own bodies. Okay, next let me untoggle bodies, come here to the circle. Uh, e for extrude, and I wanna just select the circle there. All right, and now I'm gonna bring the bodies back into view. And I'm gonna go straight up. This time I'm doing a regular extrude here, not a thin extrude. And I'm going to do distance, change it to all, and an operation is uh, going to be intersect again. So we'll change that from cut to intersect. And again, that's just going to leave me the intersection of all the bodies there plus where uh, the circle um, covers. And click OK, and you can see there that it gets rid of sort of anywhere that those fins go outside that circle. And 
leaves it so that you see this part here is actually follows the circle right there so okay almost done here a couple more things we're gonna do I uh, want to go ahead and make this uh, bottom portion here and this part right here those two kind of um, cylindrical extrusions there to make this uh, quite a bit stronger to do that we'll go ahead and select this circle here so let me make that selection E for extrude um, bring the bodies back into view I'm gonna go up change it to a join we're gonna do three millimeters here and click OK and just the fact that I made that a join you notice that it went ahead and combined all the bodies into one here so um, because this extrusion touched every single one of the other bodies it automatically joins them and I'm gonna do that again so let's go ahead and bring that sketch into view uh, E for extrude and we're gonna select this profile again our circle um, this time I'm gonna use a different approach here so instead of starting at the bottom I want to start about up here uh, let's say 20 millimeters or so up um, so what we'll do here is we'll change start to be from profile plane to offset and then our offset we'll do 20 millimeters and oops make that 20 and now notice see how the arrow jumped up now if I start extruding this up see how it extrudes from a different um, location basically 20 millimeters up and I'll just change operation from cut to join make that an even three and there we have it click OK and let's see here so now we've got this shape and if I want so I'm looking at this right now and I'm thinking okay maybe I, let's say 25 let's push this ring a little up more up uh, we can simply go back to that extrusion change that offset distance from uh, 20 to let's say 25 and you can see how that's jumped up um, so that looks pretty good to me uh, final thing as I'm looking at this that I'll probably do here is uh, maybe a fillet on these edges just to make it a little bit stronger so F for fillet I'll go ahead and select each one of these edges one two and then one more uh, so that's four try maybe a two millimeter fillet yeah that looks pretty good click OK all right one final thing left to do is there was a hole here on the original model so let's do that by creating a sketch on the surface I'll hit P for project and I'm just gonna select this area here to bring that in so I get that outline I'll uncheck body so I can just see that one section I also don't need to see the first two sketches all right here I'll hit C for circle I'll create a circle and then I'm simply gonna use my constraints here uh, I'll actually grab my tangent constraint and make this circle tangent to this edge and also tangent to the bottom edge and also tangent to the left edge there perfect exactly what where I want it finish that sketch bring the sketch back into view and I'm gonna hit E for extrude select this this and this profile here let's bring the bodies back in and I'll simply now take that arrow bring it down distance all click uh, operation is set to cut and then click OK and there we have our hole there so all right there we have it there is our tent stake all right, if you took a different approach than I took here, uh, let me know in the comments. I'd be curious to check it out. And if you have any questions on my design approach, uh, leave that in the comments as well. Huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters who keep these videos coming. Uh, thank you guys very much. I'm going to upload the Fusion 360 file uh, for all my Patreons uh, to be able to download and play with the designs if you want. And if you're currently not a patron and you enjoy my content and find it valuable, consider becoming one. I'll leave the link below. And finally, if you're looking for a structured approach to learning Fusion 360, I've got some online courses that you can also access below. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next one.